Hello friends, we are back again and got a couple of things to go over this time. One thing you may notice, I am using a microphone now because for one, haven't been a fan of the audio quality of the vlogs lately, and two, some jerk has been doing some kind of motorized thing right outside our window, like power washing or something like that, and I just figure this way, if the noise starts up again, I can kind of mitigate it a little bit, because this is much better about not picking up background noise than the microphone on the camera there, so that explains that. I want to kick things off with probably the main reason why a lot of people are here, and that is a second round of the drawing. Yes, uh, unfortunately, counter unit did not reply to the message or respond to the video or anything, so I guess they're just not interested? I mean, I, I don't know, I tried, I waited two weeks, and nothing. So, I'm gonna be doing a drawing again, and just as a reminder, the drawing is for the Iron Factory Racing Brothers set. Now, as with the last drawing, it's the same thing. It's people who have subscribed and commented within that 500 subscriber window. So I haven't added any new names to the bag. This is all the original names that I had from the first drawing. I actually kept all of them just in case. So I'm gonna be drawing from here again. I do wanna go into a little bit more specifics before I do the drawing because there were some specifics that I mentioned in the message to counter unit that never got replied to that I figured I should put out here as well. And that is, first and foremost, most importantly, if you are under the age of 18, please get your parents' permission before giving out any sort of personal information. Please. I don't know the ages of everyone who's subscribed, I don't know the ages of everyone who's commented, actually I don't know the ages of anybody who's done either of those things, but please, if you are under the age of 18, just ask your parents' permission because just don't, don't give your address out to strangers on the internet. <laughs> Which, yes, I know it's silly for me to say that because I'm a stranger on the internet and I need an address to send this stuff to, but really, just, you know, it's a thing to consider, and if you're under the age of 18, you need to get your parents' permission before doing this. Next thing. If I do not get a response for the new winner in two weeks, two weeks from the day this video is posted, and I will include an actual thing in the description. If I don't hear back in two weeks, then I'm gonna do another drawing, because I'm gonna give these guys away. Just, it may take me a while to get to someone who actually wants them. <laughs> so, I'll be doing that. Third, I'm trying something a little different this time. This time, I wanna make sure the person who wins is actually watching the video. So, if your name is drawn, please leave a comment down below telling me whether or not you're interested in getting the Racing Brothers here. And please leave that comment within two weeks of the video posting. If I don't hear from you, then I'm gonna do another drawing. If I do hear from you, all I need you to do is just tell me if you're interested. Do not, please, do not give me any actual personal info in the comment. Just tell me if you're interested. If you are interested, then I will send you a message on YouTube and we can get all that stuff hashed out without everyone else on YouTube and the internet potentially seeing your home address. So that's how we're gonna do that. All right, sound good? Cool. So, let's see who our new winner is. All right. Do I have one? Is it one? It is one, all right. So, our new winner is Blazing Mewtwo. Hopefully the camera focuses and you can see that, but Blazing Mewtwo, you have won the Iron Factory Racing Brothers. So, as I said, if you're interested, please leave a comment down below to let me know, and then I'll get in touch with you via YouTube messaging and we'll work out all that stuff and I can send this stuff off to you. If I do not hear back from you within two weeks of this video posting, I will unfortunately have to do another drawing and these guys will go to someone else. Now, on to the other part of the reason why people may actually be here, I don't know. Uh, for some reason, people seem to like collection tours. I'm guilty of it myself, so I don't blame anybody. <laughs> it's just, it's a thing that we all like to see, I guess. So, let's move on to the collection tour. 
and away we go. Now, uh, I want to start off by saying I have not dusted, so my apologies for the look of some of this. But starting from the very top shelf, here we've got Victorion, Volcanicus, and yes, Dreadwind. That's my new size comparison, buddy. And Devastator with the DNA upgrades. Now, I will be getting to Volcanicus, don't worry about that. We'll probably be getting upgrades for him as well at some point, but that's a bit of a ways off. And yeah, you'll probably notice I no longer have Superion or Computron. Well, you know, gotta make room, gotta get money to fund other stuff. So, these are the only combiners that I have left currently. Moving on down to the first part of the Masterpiece shelf. We've got Susano or Bludgeon. Still love this guy. Way in the back there, we've got Toy World Assault. It's kind of hard to see, but it's the best I can do. Sorry. And, of course, Masterpiece Soundwave. Gazranka. Archimond. This guy. <laughs> uh, whatever Unique Toys is calling Onslaught, I already forgot because the names are all so weird. And, of course, Vans Toys Grinder. And Wei Zhang's Oversized... Generations RC, or LC, and Toy World Space Racer. I actually decided to hang on to LC because, well, the other third-party masterpiece RCs just... Eh, especially Toy Worlds. Ugh. Anyway, moving on down. Still have Apollo and Nitro there. Vulcan. Dicamus. Way in the back there, we've got DX9's Terror. You can just sort of make out the scythe back there. Rider Despatron. The perfect effect assault force. I still love those guys. And technically this isn't actually a masterpiece, but with all the upgrades and various work that's been done on <laughs> the uh, Legends Ultra Magnus here, I feel like he deserves a spot in the masterpiece shelf, so he is up there. And last shelf on this side. This is sort of the miscellany shelf here so we've got in the back there we've got the beast wars neo guys long rack and karata the tfcc repaint for depth charge also another awesome one way in the back there we've got rodimus unicronus i might find another place for him because he really does not show up in the back of this shelf but not entirely sure and then my titans return squad not a whole lot of them left at this point because i just kind of to make room went with the ones that I really, really like. So, Chrome Dome, RC, Grotusk. Yeah, this is actually the Tsukar version of Double Cross. Brainstorm in the back there. And, oh, yeah, Double Cross is Target Master. And Battle Trap. Yes, I do have Battle Trap, and I actually really like this guy. Video for him will be coming. And next we've got R.A.D. Scourge. Just kind of hanging out by himself there. And then all my prime figures, which at this point are just Bulkhead, RC, uh, first edition Bulkhead and first edition RC. The Viacon and Soundwave. I no longer have the Grand Viacon General because, as I said, that paint job was just really disappointing. And the regular Viacon looks better. I hate to say it, but it does. And here we've got... Alternator's Grimlock, who is still weird, but I still love him. And in the front, got some G1 and just randomly Combiner Horsepower Glide. <laughs> but there's Bone Crusher, the only G1 Constructicon I currently have. Bumblebee, who has been with me for over 30 years now. <laughs> that is the original Bumblebee that I used to own when I was little. Cosmos, Generations Cosmos, and then all the animated stuff, where we've got Shockwave hiding in the back there, Safeguard, RC, and Soundwave. Okay, switching over to another part of the collection here, we've got the Unrustables that I have so far. Well, really, these are the only Unrustables I'm going to have. Burly, Spectre General, and Otomo. And they, they look cool. I really like them. Still really great toys. And now we move on. On and up to the to the Sentai bits, where we've got the giant saver mechs, the uh, what was this Galaxy Saver, I believe, and 
Yes, I have a couple of Ninja mechs. It's a King Shurikenjin. Really goofy looking, but I really freaking love it. And of course, the Go Busters. Go Buster King. Still want to do a video on that one. It's just the way I do the Sentai videos now. It would take me a really long time, and I just haven't had the time to invest in it. And of course, Daikai Shinkano with some squid bits attached because, yeah, <laughs> gotta make it all work. And pulling back, got the uh, last of my combo mechs, which, yeah, all the Sentai stuff is organized with, like, the, the big combinations towards the top here. So, we've got uh, Wild Tosai King, the Astro Delta Megazord, and the Delta Max Megazord. Well, I mean, okay, this is actually the Japanese version, but I don't remember what this guy's called. And moving on down, we've got the uh, beginnings of the regular Sentai mechs, like the Shogun Megazord, and the Thunder Megazord, which I actually just got recently, and I never had this before, but I kind of love it, and this thing is much bigger than I expected it to be. <laughs> this is the original 90s version, not the legendary version. And in the back there, you can see Mega Voyager and Super Zeo Megazord. And then the Time Force Megazord, or Time Robo. And moving on down one more, we've got yet another shelf for Volkaiser, the Turbo Falcon Megazord, all gussied up nice with those stickers, and the Titan Megazord. And then moving down to the final bit of the Sentai here, we've got Formo from Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Go Buster Ace, because I have nowhere else to put him because he's not a part of Go Buster King. And Go Raijin. And also I have some books, because this is a bookshelf. And below that is just video games. All right, so that is it for the Sentai. Now coming back up and moving across, you can see some artwork that we have up here, and here we've got Cybertron Primus, the Heinz Burger Blaster, because you know I still have that thing. I love that thing. It's so stupid. Golemon from Web Diver, the Mecha Boy 3D, still love that thing as well, and the U-Haul Super Mover, I think this was called, but yeah, still have that. And of course, Wei Zhang's Mega Master with the little laser beak guy there. All good stuff. So you can kind of see the shelf in its entirety. This spot here is reserved for something I haven't quite decided yet, but basically like big thing that won't fit on another shelf somewhere that will somehow fit with what's up here already. So at some point in the future, this gap will be filled. And moving across here, yep, that was my anime DVDs and might as well show this off, my Godzilla DVD collection. It is every single Godzilla movie, all 29 of them, plus a little bit of Ultraman and Gamera, as I am a nerd. Like, that's a surprise to anybody. Okay, this is, hmm, I'm going to need to try and get another light in here. Oh, that helps a little bit. So this, if it will focus, is my Optimus Prime shelf, because I have enough Optimus Primes for an entire shelf. I actually had more at one point, but, you know, had to make room, had to make money to get other things, so, yeah. But there we've got Big Convoy, the uh, Beast Wars Neo, Mammoth, Optimus Prime. In the back there, we've got the Legendary Toys knockoff of Movie Masterpiece Optimus Prime. The Leader Class Cybertron Prime with Leo Prime Claw Arm, because, of course. And then Titans Return Leo Prime, or, well, Legends Leo Prime. Power of the Primes, Optimus Prime, Opex from Generation Toys in the back there, and then Striker Manus from Make Toys. There did used to be more Optimi, but well, this is where we're at now. And moving down a little bit more, now we're getting into the last of it and the movie figures. This is my sort of masterpiece-ish movie shelf. We've got Wei Zhang's Detective in the back there. That's Kind of hard to see because it's kind of dark, but I still think that's a great movie masterpiece-ish rendition of Hound. And Legendary Toys Wasp, the knockoff of movie masterpiece Bumblebee. Human Alliance Jazz, Human Alliance Leadfoot with, <laughs> with that stupid steel jaw. I love it so much. And Unique Toys Peru Kill. I'm 
still very glad like I almost sold this guy and changed my mind and I'm glad I changed my mind because he's still very cool and movie masterpiece barricade the 10th anniversary movie sound wave based off of human alliance sound wave but with a really really sweet silver paint scheme and then Ares nitrogen the oversized black mamba knockoff of nitro zeus with just better everything basically bigger die cast a lot more paint all that good stuff and now for the very last of the collection and the last of the movie figures these are sort of the i guess not masterpiece movie figures in the back there we've got studio series grimlock who i will be getting to the two fellows who make up dragon storm whose names escape me at the moment and steelbane and skeletron because just having the knights together is pretty cool <laughs> i still like that rampage because i will always i will always love rampage he's so ridiculous same goes for mixmaster and in the back we've got lugnut who yeah it's like lugnut's technically not a movie figure but like he was released in the movie line and it's where he fits right now <laughs> Though if I move Rodimus Unicronus, he'd probably fit in that spot. And in the back there, you could see Studio Series Starscream cozying up next to Dark of the Moon Megatron. Is it Dark of the Moon Megatron or is that Revenge of the... No, that's... I think that's... Yeah, that's Dark of the Moon Megatron. And I have I think I said this in the past, but the reason I haven't done a video on Megatron here is because he's actually been customized and he came that way. Like, I bought him used off of TF Source, and he had been painted. Somebody already customized him. And so since it's someone else's custom work, I'm hesitant to do a video on it, because it's not how the figure sh actually comes out of the box. But hey, if y'all would like me to do a video on Dark of the Moon Megatron, then let me know. Because if you want it, I will do it. And then, got Studio Series Blackout. Because, of course, I mean, I had to get Blackout. I've been wanting another Blackout for a long time. And when I saw the Studio Series, I was just like, well, I guess I'm not pursuing the uh, 2007 movie version anymore. And then Sky Stalker just kind of rounding things out at the bottom there. And that is it for the last movie shelf. That is actually it for the collection in its entirety at the moment. Hi, welcome back from the collection tour. My name is Rob, and I am a complete idiot who forgot to actually start recording on the microphone. <laughs> so, I guess the first half of this is just going to be audio from the camera anyway. It's, it's been that kind of a week. And I just went around to make sure the camera's recording because I wanted to make sure. Jeez. <laughs> oh, so, one last thing. I wanted to save this for last because I know most people are probably interested in the drawing, possibly the collection tour, and the personal stuff, you know take it or leave it. I totally get it. But I did want to bring this up because it's kind of a significant thing. Um, anyone who might follow me on Twitter has probably seen that we're having some trouble with our elderly cat, Ash. Uh, he has had kidney disease for... There goes the engine thing again, so glad I got this on. He has had kidney disease for like two or three years now, and it's been manageable been giving him like a special diet and it's been helping but a couple of years ago when our cat ampersand passed away he had a really rough patch that just he wouldn't eat and he was losing a ton of weight like more than before because he was always a really finicky eater and after that his levels got all screwed up and the kidney disease really kicked off and so that's when we started on the special diet and a few months ago, we ended up having to start giving him subcutaneous fluids, which is basically just uh, we stick an IV needle in him and give him some fluids that keep him from getting dehydrated. And we do that once a week. Also not a big deal. We also had things like anti-nausea medication and appetite stimulants to try and get him to eat more, which didn't really work that well. The reason I'm bringing this up is because... Over the last couple of weeks, like a couple of weeks ago, he got really bad. He was really lethargic. He was not like moving around much. He didn't seem to want to eat anything. He pretty much just got up to drink and use the litter box and that was it. We quite honestly thought that that was going to be the last of it. We took him into the vet the next day thinking 
we were going to be saying goodbye. We didn't. He's still with us. Um, he perked up at the vet, and the vet gave us some other treatment options with some additional medications and bumping up the fluid treatments to daily instead of weekly. And he bounced back pretty quickly from that. Like, within a day, he was back to the way he was when we first started the fluid treatments, when he was still pretty perky. And it's been great. Problem is, we had to do a follow-up appointment just yesterday, as of this recording. And it included, you know, blood tests and checking his levels again and re-upping medications and that kind of thing. And we were forced to face the harsh reality that the way things are going, we can't afford to keep taking care of him. It's hard to admit to yourself because he's been a part of our family for like 15 years. <laughs> and we really just want him to be comfortable. We don't want to preemptively end anything just because he's declining. We, you know, if he's still kicking, if he's still happy to be here, we want him to be here. But we want him to be comfortable while he is here. And that's what these treatments do. They help keep him comfortable. But bi-weekly vet visits, all those medications, all the fluid treatments, the, the testing, all that stuff, it's if we have a $400 vet, vet bill in one month, we can handle that. It kind of throws things off a little bit, but we can handle it. But if we have two three to five hundred dollar vet visits in one month over a course of many consecutive months, that's something we cannot handle. That's where that's at. Uh, he's again, he's still fine. He's still doing happy. But we're in a point now where we're not entirely sure how long we can keep this up. So the whole reason I did the collection tour today for this video is because I wanted to document it. I wanted to kind of get it down in video. This is how it is right now because I'm going to be combing through and selling off more stuff to help pay for Ash's medical costs. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that I really don't want to get rid of that I'm going to because, you know, they're toys. He's a member of the family. He's infinitely more important. But I still wanted to get that down on video just as kind of like a timestamp of this is where the collection was at this point in time. The reason I'm telling you all this is because one, the collection is going to be drastically different than what you just saw pretty much like within a week from now. And two, to just, you know, say if anybody is interested in buying anything, there is a link in the description below for my eBay listings. and. You know, not trying to guilt anyone into anything. I completely understand money's tight for a lot of people right now. But like, even if you could just pass word along to other friends who might be looking for, you know, Transformers toys and things like that, it would be a big help. We did start a GoFundMe. I'm not linking it here because that's not what this channel is about. If you really want to find it, then you can find my Twitter and it's pinned to my Twitter profile. And it really, it really sucks to be in this position because... I hate having to do it <laughs> and I hate having to make the decision, but there's no way like even, you know, I've completely put the kibosh on buying any more stuff for about a month now. And it's still like, you know, that's not the problem. The problem is that just it's a relentless barrage of vet bills at this point, And we just can't maintain this pace. <sighs> Unfortunately, we have to basically put ourselves out there and hope for the best or we're just not going to be able to take care of him like we need to. And that really sucks. <laughs> but again, it sounds like I'm trying to guilt people into doing stuff, and I'm really not. I just, I don't know. I guess I'm just getting this out there to get it out there. But on that note, uh, <laughs> not a great note to end a vlog on, I know, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. But I just, again, I wanted to let everyone know what's been going on with that. But regardless, thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed commented or even just watched the videos it's still cool seeing that there are people who actually care to some degree what i have to say about toys it's weird to me but i do appreciate it very much just another reminder to blazing mewtwo in case blazing mewtwo is still watching this if you are interested or even if you're not interested please leave a comment down below to let me know because if you are interested then i will message you on youtube and we can you know i can get these things mailed out to you if you're not interested then I know and I can do another drawing 
sooner than two weeks from now. But regardless, that is going to do it. So thank you everybody again very much. And I'm sorry for getting all real world problems at the end there. But, you know, I figured it was important to say. So thank you again. And I will see you all next time.